What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to do some general mix down tips and tweaks that can kind of help you balance your mix and uh, figure out what sounds best. One of the biggest tips I can give you from the bet is to kind of find elements that blend with each other naturally and by that I mean like, I have a bass line and like a gen just a really basic loop here right now so if I play it you can hear that it already sounds kind of harmonically okay I mean of course there's interference you know the sub hasn't been EQ'd so there's low end interference and like you know stuff going on um looks like I already got this one low cut so scratch that The biggest thing though with mixdown is the less mixing down you have to do, the better, generally. Because if things naturally kind of sit in their own spot in the mix. So what I'll do is like, alright, I'll throw a line together. I'll throw like a bass line, you know. And as it's playing, I'll go and cycle through kicks and snares that like, or you know, depending on what I, f I feel like going for. I'll cycle through ones that seem to, and, and I'll... I'll Settle on a few that I like that kind of s cut through the bass because that's usually the main thing in dubstep um, And then that's usually what I'll go with so I'll have it like play So you can kind of hear how some of the kicks sort of cut through a little better um, than others. But basically I found one that I think sits well already in the mix. It kind of has like, it covers the lower end and, and it kind of has that smash to it. That the, the bass, it's not really interfering with the bass too much. It, it kind of sits on its own in the mix. So, um, but anyway, after you find your elements, because that's going to be the main thing, is, is try to get the try to get good ingredients first. Good ingredients are, are the best way to make a good pot of delicious dubstep stew. So, after that, what you want to do, basic stuff, you know, like, I'm sure you guys have heard this already, usually cut the low end from your uh, mid synths and, um, you know, apply a sub. It's just, it gives you a little more control on the low end to do this thing. Uh, that way, you know, I can have, I can solo my low end if I have to check it over, you know. And like sometimes, you know, I'll want to, you know, do different stuff with the sub. So that's another tip is um, I like to keep, personally, I like to keep my mid bass and my sub separate. So I have more consistent control over the sub bass. And um, that way you can do, you know, all kinds of intricate stuff on your mids without having to risk losing that, that fine, you know, hard cutting through low end. Uh, what else? Let's see. So... I haven't even really done any, so let me let me do some actual like EQing here. I got pretty much everything has an a peer, parametric EQ on it already. Um, what I'll do is I'll try to just kind of get things to sit with each other, sort of. So like I'll see that as soon as this kick's hitting and this bass is going, what I'll do is I'll look for resonance peaks, like where the area. I'll I'll actually loop it really quickly, um, and like I'll have it low though, so it's not annoying. So I'll have it like, you know. And then what I'll do is I'll like look for the parts that are probably interfering with each other. Like a little bit maybe here, you know, where's that at? 1363. See, so yeah, I'll go around there, maybe cut some from the kick, maybe from the mids, depending on what I want to cut through more. Usually I like my drums to snap through, so I might do the opposite, but I'm going to see what this is like first. Let's see, actually. See, yeah, the thing about it is that kind of gives the bass its texture, so I'll probably cut some from the kick just in case and see if it, if it blends a little better. So yeah, let's see how that sounds a little louder, if that helped at all. It's really subtle, um, this in particular. Probably gonna have to do a little more EQing in order to get it to sound just right. Another thing I'll do is um, cut some lows from the kick. Usually I look where my sub is peaking at. So like right here, um, oh, I got a weird sub on too. Let me let me actually do something with this. Let me make it not sweep so much. It's just hitting in the low end, nice and cleanly. I don't even know. Doesn't need saturation either. Okay. Um. So. Right. So right around what 43ish hertz is where I'll probably 
roll off my, my kick, you know, a little higher usually. And I mean, I do it to taste. I do it until it sounds like it's not really, you know, they, they have their own place kind of. The biggest thing is using your ears, I promise you. Like, that's going to be... All this stuff is from just messing around and, and shit until, like, I got kind of a method down. Everyone everyone will have their own method. So take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. That's, that's another bit of advice. This just happens to be what I... This just happens to be what I do, so... Um, what else we got? So, all right. Another thing I'll do sometimes if I have like subs that uh, sweep kind of like this one, I turn it down a little bit, but it sweeps from a higher up pitch, and you can hear it if I turn the decay up. It just gives a little punch, kind of makes it snap in. It, it makes the sub a little, little chunkier. Um, other methods you can use are like uh, tube saturation or you know shaping a little bit might give it a little warmth or like i'll uh make it triangle sometimes depending on the track you know it, it really depends on on the like harmonic balance of everything that's the main thing you want to find a balance in your mix you want everything to kind of have its own area and like it's basically everything you put into the track you want to sound similar to how it did before you put it in the mix so you kind of want it to still cut through with its own presence if you have like a really wicked bass and you layer it with strings and they kind of sound, you know, like together. But if, if, if you spent hours designing that bass, you know, don't you want the, the harmonic deliciousness of that to cut through the mix? You know, that's that's going to be your main objective. Try to get everything to sound kind of how it does naturally while it's in the mix as well. So, yeah, I'll just... I have a whole, I have all, both of these bases routed to a bass mix, by the way. That's what this is over here. Just got a low cut. Uh, that, that's another thing, actually. Um, I'll have, like, every bass I make has its own channel, just in case I want to go in and EQ something out. Because, you know, I mean, when you use a, a cornucopia of different bases, you're going to have a lot of different, like, harmonic things that could, could potentially be different from the other bass. You know, like this one. This one clearly, you know, this one has more low end in it, so I'll want to cut more low end from this one probably than that one a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So I usually do it like that, and then general stuff I'll do here. This one definitely has resonance around like here. I could probably go, the best thing I would do actually is go back in the sound design and do it, but let's just, for simplicity's sake, do some EQing. Because that's the general thing of this. Mix down. Yeah, mix down and sound design go hand in hand. They're, they're definitely... Um, very, very, like, complementary to each other. And, um, if you have great sound design, you will, uh, definitely, you want to bring it out through your mix down. And, uh, that sort of thing. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, learned something from this video and are able to use it to push your sound, hopefully, a little bit further in the right direction. So if you liked it, go ahead and subscribe. I plan on doing more of these videos, so hopefully I can help you guys with a little bit more. Um, if you have any questions about the video or anything else you guys would want to know, just ask in the comments, and I'll see if I can help you out.